In this video, I want to highlight the difference between calculating a limit and calculating f of a number. And the way I'm going to do that is by studying the features of this graph here. So let's walk through the graph first. As we travel down along this line here, when x equals 1, the corresponding y value jumps up to here. Then we move along the line here, when x equals 2, the corresponding y value jumps up to here. Then we travel up along the line here, everything's fine and all the way back down here. So let's look at the individual parts. Let's begin by finding what f of 1 is. This is saying to you, when x equals 1, what is the corresponding y value? And the way you do that is you go to x equals 1, you go up to where it hits the curve, well it passes through it there, but it hits the graph there, go across to find the corresponding y value, and the answer is 2. Okay. Now, let's calculate the limit as x tends to 1 from the left of f of x and the limit as x tends to 1 from the right of f of x. Now, if it helps you, you could draw in a vertical line for x equals 1. So, Everything along that green line has an x value of 1. So I'm saying travel towards that green line, towards that x value of 1 from the left hand side, and then travel towards an x value of 1 from the right hand side. That's what the little minus and little plus sign means. So as I travel towards that green line along my curve, getting closer and closer and closer, the corresponding y value will be 0. And as I travel towards x equals 1 from the right, along the curve, I'm going to travel along the curve from the right, the corresponding y value will be 2. So overall, we say that the limit as x tends to 1 of f of x does not exist in this case. And the reason for that is because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. But notice that even though the limit doesn't exist, f of 1 does exist. It's 2 in this case. So let's carry on. Let's move on to f of 2. So just like before, this means when the x value is 2, what is the corresponding y value? So when x is 2, you go up to where it hits the curve, well it passes through it there, but it does hit there. Go across, the corresponding y value is 3. And just like before, let's work out the limit as x tends to 2 from below of f of x and the limit as x tends to 2 from above of f of x. So again, if it helps, you can draw in a dashed line. So everything along that dashed line has an x value of 2. So I'm saying here, Travel towards that green line, travel towards that x value of 2 from the left, or a number smaller than 2. So as I'm travelling towards that green line from the left, the corresponding y value is 2. And as I travel down along the line from the right, the corresponding y value is 2 again. So overall, we can say that the limit as x tends to 2 of f of x equals 2. And the reason for that is because the limit from the left does equal the limit from the right, and the limit is 2. So notice here that the limit does exist, the limit is 2, but f of 2 is something different, f of 2 is 3. Okay, so that's that. Let's move on. Let's look at f of 3. So f of 3, just do like before, when x is 3, travel up to where it hits the curve, hits it here, travel across, it has a y value of 4. And again, let's calculate the limit as x tends to 3 from the left, and the limit as x tends to 3 from the right of f of x. 
So once again, if it helps, you can put it in the dash line. So as you travel towards this green line, in other words, an x value of 3 from the left, the corresponding y value is 4. And from the right, as you head towards the green line, in other words, an x value of 3 from the right, the corresponding y, the y value is 4 once again. So we say that the limit as x tends to 3 overall, f of x is 4. So in this case, the limit does exist because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, it's 4. And also, f of 3 is 4. So hopefully by now you can see that you can have all the different combinations of the limit not existing, but f of the number does exist. The limit does exist, but f of the number is something different. The limit does exist, and f of the number is the same thing. So when the limit does not exist, the lines don't correspond. Like this case here. The lines do not correspond at all, so in this case the limit does not exist. But here the lines do correspond. We are just missing one little point in here. So the limit does exist here. The limit does exist here. So the limit is looking around the point, not actually at the specific x value of 2 in this case. Okay, so I hope that has cleared up some problems you may have